welcome to Capsule, where we talk about wealth management and sustainability. I'm joined here by Georgina Parker, Head of Sustainability at Quero Capital. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you. When it comes to Quero Capital, how is how are you navigating through these regulatory, um, let's say, woes at the moment? Yeah, it's been a very busy few years in terms of regulation. Uh, we've had, as everyone is aware of, we'd have the SFDR, we've had the EU taxonomy, but we've also had country level regulation in France, we have proposals in the UK. So it's been quite complicated to navigate. Um, I think one of the really important parts or objectives of the regulation is greenwashing. Um, and we totally welcome any effort to regulate greenwashing in the industry because I think the The noise got extremely high during a period, and I think that started to be regulated down. Um, and for us, we were always conservative in the way that we communicated. So, you know, as we navigate through these different regulations, we have total conviction in our approach and we're very comfortable with the way that we've approached it. Nevertheless, greenwashing is still a topic. You can read uh, headlines. Um, can transparency, can regulation help or do we need to go you know, one step mm. beyond and, and have a clear view on what ESG is at the end of the day. Yeah, so I think that the regulation is helping. Uh, I think that I see that there's less noise, a little less noise in the industry. Um, I think there is, a cons uh, we feel a little concerned that there's a lot of lobbying in from other asset managers and maybe from bigger players to dilute some of the efforts of the regulation to really compartmentalize, compartmentalize the industry so that we have a clear division between Article 9, dark green funds, we have uh, versus the Article 8 funds. Um, so I think that we, our view in general is that there should always be a qualitative assessment of companies. So I think it's very difficult for regulators to be very specific about what should and shouldn't be considered a sustainable investment. Um, and I, but I think that disclosure does really help, especially with the documents that we have now. You can very effectively compare funds against funds and challenge asset managers about what they're doing. Apart from regulation, what are the challenges that you're facing when it comes to sustainable investing? I would say the biggest challenge for us, and I mean, it's talked about a lot, but is data. And I think one of the things that there is um, an encouragement from the regulator as well, but in the market is to be more data focused. So looking at KPIs and indicators um, and measuring the kind of portfolio impact or the sustainability of a portfolio that way. And data is really important, but we have three major problems with data. One is um, data quality. So we're still using data even in Europe that's mostly unaudited. Um, it may be only partial, they may be excluding part of their business. Um, so we have quite a long way to go on data quality, uh, data availability. There's still a lot of gaps. When, it, when we look at many of our universes and certain data points, we see gaps, we see holes where companies aren't reporting certain data points and which makes it difficult for us to have a kind of quantitative approach. Um, and then thirdly is really... Um, how effective the data point is at, at really communicating what it is that you're looking at. And I think this even for, for you know, the, the, some of the KPIs that we prioritize, like carbon emissions, like we have a lot of, you know, a lot of portfolio managers and a lot of our clients are asking us to focus on carbon, uh, scope one and scope two carbon emissions. Um, and, you know, there are problems even in a data point like that in that if a company outsources their operations, versus a competitor, they might look like they're doing a better job of decarbonizing uh, than their competitor, who actually is a bit more honest. They have their full supply chain in the, in the business. Um, so we look at the data points. This is super important to look at data points like carbon emissions, but we think it's always important to qualify what you see by really understanding the companies. And this is where you know, we think there will become more and more this big differentiation between active managers and passive managers when you're thinking about sustainability. We've come a long way from ESG integrating as a first step towards really creating impact. And, and that's where you position yourself as well. How, do you, how would you consider your strategy in this, you know, in this historical perspective as well? Yeah, so for us, we, and I think of all the conversations that we have, and I think as an ESG team, you can spend a lot of your time thinking about ratings and regulation and 
you know, you have to take a step back and think about what it is that we're trying to achieve. Why are we all doing this? And the point is to have a positive impact. Um, so for Quero, that we see that through our Article 9 funds. So we have um, two public equity Article 9 funds. One is called Accessible Clean Energy, which is focused on investing in companies that have a material impact in decarbonizing the energy system. Um, and second, we have net zero emissions. So looking more broadly at the broad economy, at companies that are really going to make a difference in decarbonizing. Then we have um, in our infrastructure private equity team, we're investing in assets directly that have a big impact, say renewable energy, water efficiency. Um, and then the other area that we think we can have a big impact is through engagement. And we do this at a corporate level of commitments such as the Net Zero Asset Manager Initiative, where we'll be across all of our funds asking our investor, the companies that we invest in to set um, science-based targets. And then we also have, you know, really interesting opportunities with our small cap team who have a very long investment history. They take quite large positions in small companies and we have really direct access to the executive. And we have a number of conversations directly with CEOs to talk about how we think they should be integrating sustainability into their business, um, how they should be disclosing this information um, and also how they should be setting objectives like a science based target. So. Um, we see our capacity to impact across different strategies. So you're against diluting Article 9 when I hear that? Yeah, I think that um, we think that that's a real positive that's come out of the regulation is that I think it's about 5% of funds are Article 9. And, and the reason is that these are funds that are completely focused on um, sustainable objectives. And I think that's great. And rather than dilute Article 9, I would suggest that there's more effort to differentiate between the span of funds that are within Article 8. Georgina, thank you very much for your insight. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for listening. That was Capsule. Stay tuned. <laughs>